Uh, the British newspaper, the Daily Mail, has in a, in a report that has raised many eyebrows, said that the violent ethnic clashes that had occurred in Leicester last year were, according to it, quote-unquote, stoked by Prime Minister Modi's Hindu Nationalist Party. Uh, it quoted an unnamed British security source, and the report said there was uh, evidence of activists linked to the BJP using cloud WhatsApp groups to encourage Hindu protesters to take to the streets. Uh, those clashes had erupted between Hindu and Muslim youths uh, following an India-Pakistan cricket match in August last year. And let's get a quick reaction uh, uh, to that from Pandit Sutesh Sharma, who's joining us from London, Dharmic scholar, interfaith speaker, uh, somebody who actually went to Leicester just after that particular violence, and uh, he'd spoken to us uh, at that time. Pandit Sharma, thank you so much for joining us. We'd, we'd spoken to you just after the, the, the Leicester violence uh, uh, which had happened there. Just wanted to get your reaction to this article that's come out uh, in the Daily Mail, which essentially is saying that groups linked to the BJP were responsible for the violence that took place in Leicester. Now, you went there just after the violence. How would you respond to or react to this particular report? Uh, this uh, article in the Daily Mail, for a couple of observations. Firstly, the Daily Mail is not really accepted as a uh, reference material. It's not accepted as journalism, which is valid. It has a bias, and its bias is very often seen in anti-India, anti-Hindu rhetoric. Um, I myself was the target of a hit job by the uh, Daily Mail a few years ago, and it claimed something like Modi's BJP lands on the shores of this country. And I have nothing whatsoever to do with the BJP and indeed have not had the honour of meeting Prime Minister Modi. So the fact that it's the Daily Mail is not something that should be relied upon as a, a source of evidence. Scrutinising the article, you'll notice also they have some mysterious source providing mysterious evidence, and neither the source is cited nor indeed the evidence presented. So it is little more than a, a dog whistle. It's a, an invitation um, to flagellate uh, Indians, Hindus, and indeed anything to do with Prime Minister Modi. Well, you know, one of the specific comments that is there in the article, it said that there were WhatsApp groups that were saying stand up and confront uh, you know, the Pakistani gangs and the other gangs that were there in Leicester. Um, were those WhatsApp messages actually circulating? I've not seen any of those WhatsApp messages. Um, and to, to give you a bit of background, as we spoke last time, immediately after the Leicester violence, I was probably one of the few who, within two days, was in Leicester to try and find out what was going on. I was interviewing and doing research with regard to exactly who was at what place at which time. I met local politicians, I met local community leaders. And so when I produced the first report, um, we I think it was uh, broadcast on YouTube and uh, a few other channels. Um, when we produced the report that there was no evidence whatsoever of any whatever this BJP Hindutvadi extremism is on the streets of Leicester, nobody refuted it. There was actually no evidence whatsoever that there was a presence of extremist elements who were associated with the BJP. We have in this country an organization called the Overseas Friends of the BJP. And it's really a support organization. It gathers funds. It uh, tries to um, create some sort of a narrative where perhaps a narrative is lacking when it comes to the uh, uh, functions and the announcements of the BJP. But it's not politically active. It doesn't engage in trying to influence the politics of this country. Um, there are the usual hotheads uh, who make all sorts of claims, but they are not spokespersons for any organizations. So, no, um, there was no evidence whatsoever. Whatsoever, including WhatsApp sort of groups. I'm a member of many of the, the, the WhatsApp groups that uh, do with our community. And there was absolutely nothing to, to imply that Hindus should engage in violence, that hin Hindus should engage in robust responses to the violence that was being directed at us. It was absent. It was noticeable by its absence, in fact. All right, uh, Pandit Sharma, we leave it there for the moment. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we'll be diving into these stories in a little bit more detail uh, as, as we go forward. Thanks for being with us.